today's uh, webinar, first I want to introduce uh, who is on the call with us today on this webinar. My name is Yuri Fried. I'm a director of customer success here at Trusted IT Group. Also with us is Alex Rodov. Uh, they're on, uh, on the beach. Well, you know, I guess in front of the beach, but it does look really nice and warm there. Uh, he's our Microsoft MVP, and he's going to be joining us also to, we're going to be talking about, it's all about teams working remotely and all the capabilities. We're going to go through how do we get the teams installed pretty much on any device, whether it's a desktop or, or any device at all. Uh, then we're going to set up some uh, channels. We're going to set up some groups, show you how to, you know, start calls and meetings. Uh, see how it integrates with your with Outlook, with your calendar, uh, and also show you uh, how you can bring in some apps and, and sync files uh, uh, in that environment. Uh, so we, as far as the uh, Teams concerned, they could easily be downloaded from Microsoft website. It's a free application, uh, and, or you can download it from the, also from the App Store. I'm also going to show you once you get installed on your desktop, you can also get a, a compl complimentary app, like I said, either iOS or Android, it's available. And just to mention that us as Trusted IT Group, uh, we're offering a completely free team support. So for those of you that actually will get this installed and still have questions or you have problems getting it done, anything and everything's about setting it up and uh, uh, setting it, uh, you know, deploying it, uh, or, uh, you know, having, you know, team members having issues, please, uh, you can go to our website, fill out this quick form, and we'll be able to provide support to you uh, at any time. Um, now, without further ado, let me dive into the Teams environment. So here is basically where you're probably going to start, right, because you're going to have sort of when you come into Teams, one of the things that you may want to do is uh, create a team. Okay, so the and again, you can uh, create a team. Uh, if it's a private team, you will need a code to join a private team, and uh, also you will see teams that are currently exist but you're not a member of, but they're public. You can go ahead and join them. So you could do that also. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just show you how to create a team. So we're going to create a team from scratch. You can also create it from an existing group for the purpose of this demonstration. We're going to do it from scratch. And we're going to create a public uh, team. going to give a team a name. So this is going to be, uh, uh, well, I guess this is topical, right? COVID-19. Crisis. I mean, you want to pull this team together because some people are remote, you know, you need to pull this in a hurry, uh, trying to manage, you know, activities around this crisis, whether you need to support the team members that are remote in the field at work. Um, and we could skip that because I'll show you how to do that once the team is created. Okay. So at this point, as you could see, the team was created right here. And this tab is by default is created for you. General, it's always there. And these uh, three uh, tabs on the top are, are also created for you and uh, by default. And you could add others. So uh, by default, you have post, you have files, okay, uh, which will show you how to upload the files and how they sync with your SharePoint. Uh, we also have... Uh, wiki and this is a place where you can pretty much post anything and everything about this channel where you can upload images uh you can create different sections here as you could see uh you know this you can break it up it's sort of like a the microsoft note type of functionality so the, this let's say would be a call a call center page and uh under that, you may have, we may say, uh, you know, uh, tier one, you know, and then you can have another section and you could call the tier two and then create, you know, different content. And 
by the way, you can also, as you're creating these, you could see these little chat icons come up. You can actually have relevant chat that is specifically for this section. So, uh, you know, and again, the, that's the beauty about Teams is you could collaborate on any section whatsoever. Uh, but again, we'll get into this in a moment. So uh, going back to the uh, general setup, foremost, you wanna add team members. So uh, we can go ahead and add team members from the group. And this is all linked to your Active Directory. Uh, so this is controlled by your IT department and uh, they will go ahead and set that up for you. Uh, so we're gonna add Alex, we're gonna add some other team members. Uh, so we have a couple of team members here. And again, they could be a member or they could be an owner. So we're gonna make Alex also an owner and Kirill is gonna be a member. So now we, we have a team and it has a few members. Now in this team, you may want to create different sections, right? So, uh, and this is where you would do that. So this particular team, and you can go ahead and you could add the, at this point you could add what's called channels. Okay, so same way as I created say COVID-19 crisis, we can have a channel called call center. And we can add that channel right to the uh, to our teams and it will appear here okay and again uh, this is this has general posts files and wikis same same thing would apply for a specific channel and this specific channel uh, you also you can you can pin it you can hide it uh, there are different capabilities here when it comes to the channels themselves uh, you can also at this point, uh, you can add the uh, different functionality here, but the, the main functionality of Teams is obviously collaboration, right? So I want to talk, talk about that for a moment. So if we go back up and um, we'll look at the, the main sort of collaborative environment, that would be chat. And chat is persistent here, also the same as anywhere else. You could chat anywhere. Uh, you could uh, you could chat with any of your members. You could create groups. You could bring one, two, three, four, five people, or as many as you like, into one chat environment and have an ongoing, persistent conversation with them. And again, you can do ad hoc meetings right from chat. So if we can go ahead and start a phone call, actually, I can start a phone call with Alex as we speak, and uh, it will ring, and he will pick up. I would hope. And uh, we can have an instant uh, uh, voice conversation. We can have a, hello, we can have a video conversation. You can, you know, blur your environment. Uh, and you can uh, have, uh, you know, uh, again, it's, you could share files at that point. You could share screens. You could take control of each other's screens. Uh, so that that is completely, uh, flexible and available to you in a chat format. Now, also, when you're chatting, actually, and if you do a mention of using the at sign, like so, um, actually, in this particular channel, see if I mention Alex. He will actually be, not only he will be notified via email, uh, but he will have a little icon that will uh, let him know in the, in the activity that there is a mention for him. So when he returns, let's say he was away from his desk, he will actually be notified that, that, that he was mentioned somewhere in the channel. And once he clicks on that activity, it will take him directly to the channel. Actually, if Alex, if you wanna demonstrate something similar so actually, if you, if you were to do the same for me, I could actually demonstrate that functionality. Um, so again, there we go. See the pop-up, that's part of the notification. And also at the same time, I see right there where it says Teams, there's a little icon right here that I, would, that, that, that I had a mention. So I know that I need to address it. And when I go to the activities, I also see a mention. So it really flags you. And uh, here, I can either participate in a chat 
or I can directly reply to Alex with an emoji or anything that I like right here. And then now we have a mini conversation, sort of a sub conversation going. And again, I could start a meeting here. I can add a video, I can get a, add a file right to this particular conversation. So you can have conversations, and you can also have sub conversations that are sort of reside underneath these conversations. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention that's really a very, very interesting feature and very convenient feature is the calendar, right? So as you could see, all these meetings actually, I did not set up in the Teams environment. I set them up in Outlook. So, uh, and because there's a plugin in the Outlook that allows you to set up a meeting and they will automatically are synced into this calendar. So if we were to go to my Outlook environment and I were to set up a, uh, uh, let's say a new meeting, right? Right here. Okay. All I have to do is click on Teams meeting and it automatically will populate the Teams uh, call in number and a link to spawn the team meeting. And I could do my invites from here. And then as soon as I finish my invite, it will, it will appear on my Teams uh, calendar here. So that's the synchronization between calendars. Okay. And as far as the sync, uh, same, same thing as actually happens with files. So here we have all our files and they are automatically synced through SharePoint and OneDrive right into your desktop. So whatever files I have here in my OneDrive, they also appear here on the one, OneDrive. So as you could see, they're pretty much the same, okay? So that, that's the, you know, sort of, again, the whole premise of different windows, same information. And also the same thing applies to files that are here. Uh, Alex, I hope you're managing the chat because I see there are quite a few. Uh, we'll have, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I, yes. am, I am actively responding and we can, we can address some of these questions also. Okay, great. Yeah, so we'll we'll tackle some of these in a little bit. Uh, so you could uh, again, uh, as far as files are concerned, same thing applies here. The files can be uploaded, okay, and sync again through SharePoint to your drive, and it's uh, it's relevant and it's consistent with whatever channel you're working with. Okay, so if the files are uploaded here. They will be a part of the team COVID-19 crisis call center. And uh, as soon as you say upload, it obviously goes to your local drive and starts uploading and it's synced. Um, we can also add different functionality. Okay, again, it's channel-based. So let's say we wanna add uh, Bing. You know, we need a search engine that's readily available so, though, so we don't have to get out of the uh, our Teams environment, and uh, we can go ahead and do that by simply inserting it. I have an extra H. Okay, so we save that, and uh, here is where we end, and this applies to many, many different apps. So now we can do our searches here. You know, it's full Bing right, in, in your team's environment. And again, the reason why, why would you wanna do that? Because we can go ahead and collaborate, okay? We can collaborate specifically on what goes on in each and every window. We can have an ad hoc meeting right here. We could start a meeting, okay? So, uh, and the, or upload any files or upload any pics, uh, again, based on whatever you are working on. And everybody will be notified the same. You need a more real estate, you can go ahead and grab more real estate and this comes down. You need even more real estate, you can actually control this with your Zoom functionality by creating even more real estate, okay? And we can go back to 100. Okay, so th this is your, um, uh, one of the apps you can add in. 
Uh, another good example, just to kind of show you the app functionality, we can, let's say, let's pick another one. Uh, these are all the apps, by the way, that can be added in. OneNote, Power BI, Planner, PDFs, Words, PowerPoints. Uh, why don't we do YouTube? Why don't we add up a YouTube? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, YouTube.com slash trusted IT group. Hopefully I remember the channel name correctly. So here, not only you went to trusted IT group channel, but we were able to find the specific video that we need, let's say again, that we need to collaborate on, that we need to have a conversation around, that we want everybody to view, whether it's a, uh, uh, it's informational video or whatever the case is, you know, uh, again, there's many, many apps you could plug in and it's, they're all available here to you. Um, what are this? There's so many features of Teams, you know, sometimes when I, uh, I mean, I love to present sort of like this, uh, flying through all of them, but uh, there's just a lot to talk about. And mm -hmm. I, I hope I can cover everything. Yes, Alex. Yeah, there are, there are a few few questions here um, through the chat. And then uh, please, uh, this is great. Please submit to, you know, uh, put your questions out as well. Um, so first of all, uh, yeah, I'll let you connect to the mobile device. We'll, we'll go through this. Uh, but that was uh, the first question regarding this. This is going to, uh, yeah, this is going to be recorded. And uh, this is, as a matter of fact, right now live on YouTube. And we'll stay on YouTube, so uh, we'll also distribute the link to this session, so you can uh, uh, forward this to anyone who wasn't uh, available to join. Um, the the channel ownership. So the, unfortunately, the or well, fortunately, uh, the the way it's set up, you set up the permissions at the teams level. At the, I mean, at the team level. So you add the members to the team and all the channels and tabs within those channels are going to be following that team's membership um, permission. So uh, the question was, can I set up a different permissions for different channels? The answer is no. All the channels will be available for all the team members. Okay. Um, then the other question was, um, uh, how... Um, is there a way to mark a selective conversation as private between specific team members? Or do all the team members have access to everything within designated team? Excellent question. Um, if you would if you uh, would like to have a private sort of conversation, right? Uh, not really sharing this conversation with all the team members, then you would need to have a separate chat you know, with that person um and uh because everything everything uh, that is shared within a team is potentially uh available for all the team members okay uh so if you have a if you need to chat with someone privately then open the private chat with that person then the, there there are two questions that begin three questions uh how do we get rid of um uh notification on their chat when showing a number uh, but already have read the message. So, um, so all the you know all the notifications are yeah you can you can manage the you know uh, channel notifications specifically for this channel right. So this is you can on and off if, if there's some active channel and you don't want to be you know buzzed all the time. Every everyone you know, or someone typing something a lot of people there. You can manage it on channel by channel basis just to kind of not get notified or get notified. But also, yeah, if you, uh, if you show the settings and the notifications area, yeah, so this is where you manage your overall notifications. And uh, I don't think we have you know enough time to go every through every single one of them, but uh, you can play around with these notifications and basically tune this up to uh, to fit your your needs. Um, so there's banner notification, right? This banner that pops up when someone uh, is, is typing, and also um, also a um, an email. So you can manage it there. How do I add the second one? Is how do I add someone when they have the app installed on their computers but seem inactive? 
So um, Teams is, uh, in order to have these features, like if you mention someone or, uh, or you would need to like um, uh, find someone or chat with, with someone, um, best of all, it's, it works uh, uh, it works within one Office 365 environment where all these people are part of the Active Directory, right? So, so when when you're in the in the in the company and you have all the users part of the Active Directory, uh, then you would be able to see all of them, and they would have to be logged into their account, right? So, you, if you click on you see this on the upper right corner, you can see this trusted IT group, and then if you click on 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 your on your profile, you would actually see that this is you logged into your trust IT group account, right? So, and um, that yeah, I think uh, uh, the other thing worth mentioning: these are or, or automated. Some of them. So, when you're in the meeting, you can actually see when somebody is in the meeting or in the call, it becomes automatically busy, and you could even have a setting to have a pop up for you as soon as they free up, it'll pop up and show you that this member became available. Uh, so the but the other ones you could set freely uh, yourself. Do not disturb, uh, be right back, but appears away and busy are automated. Appears away is when there's inactivity. So those are automated. Yeah, so uh, so I mean, yeah, if I get to understand the question correctly, so you can install the app on your desktop or laptop and not basically connect to your work, you know, with your work account, which means that you won't be able to really see or, you know, you won't be able to collaborate with your uh, with your colleagues that are that are all logged into your work account, into your, into your with your work account. So, uh, in in this case, this is more of a you know uh, IT question, like where whether this is set up properly. Uh, we can obviously help with that. But um, if you logged into your work account, you should be able to see all your, you know, um, all your colleagues and people who are who you are who you work with, and be able to search and type their names, and that would that should be able that should show up. Um, and and of course, they may be inactive, maybe because they just said, you know, do not disturb or you know, uh, just may, went offline, something like that. So, as far as the uh, there was a question, how to create a Teams. Uh, we went through this in the very, very beginning. Usually, you would not have, you know, this is very typical for IT admin, admins to not allow creation of teams um, by users. So unless you are admin, you would unlikely would have access to create a team. If you are using Teams as a, as a free standalone team, you're just playing around switching themes dark themes and light themes and stuff like that so if you're if you're uh, using the teams uh just for your purpose then uh uh then you can obviously create a team and then invite anyone to that team so here's a day when you look, click on teams on the left there's a like a, this join or create a team option and then uh, you can create a team you can also rewind this video and see the actual steps that you already did uh, to create a team but this is basically how you how you do it, okay? Fine. Uh, yeah, quick, um, uh, just a quick mention because I don't want to make sure that everybody knows how to download the mobile version of it, which is available. Once you download your desktop, you can go ahead and click here and download instructions will come right into your email and it will be guided into the App Store on the I iOS or, or App Store or Android. You can go ahead and download it and I as Alex was answering questions, I demonstrated the team's functionality in mobile. I mean, it's great in mobile. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's almost, for me, it's almost better in mobile than it is on the desktop. Yeah. So, um, well, there, there, there are a lot of new things that are coming out. Uh, so we're new things like you see this great virtual, but I'm not actually on the beach. So for, for those who are, if you're interested uh, to know, <laughs> so we're, we're, this is a this is a feature of Zoom, but um, uh, Teams is baked into the Office and Office 365. If you're if you're the work at the workplace, have Office 365. Most likely, you're using Teams or have Teams uh, in your possession. 
So uh, feel free to take all these features um, and uh, and use it. I don't know if you were, have you um, uh, were you did you have time to go through the calendar and. Uh, uh yeah, I went through calendar. We're kind of running a little short on time. One thing I want to mention, I think where there was a lot of questions about notifications, you know, even if you're not looking at Teams, uh, you actually, every time there's a mention, as you could see, it comes right into your email. So it all depends on your settings. So A, you see it on your phone as a notification, like a little, uh, you know, dot pops up, or you get in your email. So there's many different ways to get notified. And uh, another point is when you are away, uh, not on Teams, not away from the fall, and all you are is you get something in your email, let's say that you want to share with the team. There's actually a way to do that very easily. There's a functionality here. It says get, get email address. So when you, when you email something into this address, you just copy and paste it. It will actually appear as a post, you know, right here in this team as you're emailing to it. Uh, and uh, let me take just one quick moment, which I forgot to do, but it's this is real important for us. We set up this quick poll just to get a sense of from you guys what you like to see next so we can cater these webinars. So let me just launch this poll. It'll take a few seconds to answer these questions again so we can cater these webinars in the future with better and more informative subjects that are of interest to you. So let me go ahead and launch this web poll for a couple of seconds. If you don't mind answering, they're all anonymous. Answers obviously anonymous. So we'll let it uh, yeah. run. You were while well, well, everybody's uh, answering and reading through these options. There was a question about how do we um, add access to someone to be part of the team or uh, create access to someone to be able to create team. So. So with this, uh, the partial answer, right? The, the, actually, the first part of the answer, not the partial, the first part of the answer, is that um, it is permission that is uh, managed by, um, uh, by by Office 365 admin uh, that would allow or disallow uh, an, an user to create a team. Okay, so it's it's basically as simple as that. Then, if you do have the team and your happens to be the owner of the team, okay, let's look at the results. Yep, here the sorry, interrupt you. Here the result looks like portfolio management is it. We actually do have a replay of the portfolio management, but we can do a deeper dive, I guess, Alex, right? Into I think there's one coming up on Friday where we're going to do the portfolio prioritization webinar uh, um, yes you're absolutely correct this is the uh, how to prioritize your project portfolio during this channel yeah so we're right on track then okay great yeah so Yuri, uh if i may just for a second ask you to walk um everybody through i just say you added you you created a team this 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 great team here how do, we, how do we add more team members once we created the team? Uh, okay, so that's a good uh, good point. So we go go ahead again. It's all on the, uh, it's called based on the hierarchy. So you can only add members to the whole team, not the channel. They automatically, here we, we would go ahead and add a team member right here. So this would be another team member that would be added right here. Yeah, if you can go to the section that also just list, uh, lists all the members. Uh, yeah, on that uh, three dot menu. Um, yeah, there's a uh, yeah, go back where you were um, on the uh, yeah, here you can uh, manage to manage team. All right, there you yeah, go. So this is just lists and, and lists all the guests like members and guests. Uh, expand that last bullet point. Yeah. Uh, it, it would list everyone who uh, also joined, and you can also manage the the capacity at which these members are operating with this team. So this could be a member, or, the, or this could be or this could also be a um, this could also be an owner. So you can co-own a certain team 
And once you are the owner of the team, then you can basically add people as you wish um, uh, to that team. So, and there, and there are additional settings that you can adjust the team uh, to uh, to collaborate. I mean, there's uh, all of this is, by the way, all of this is also programmable in a way that you know. And we have cases where we. Uh, we create the team automatically based on the new project or based on a new business case or new thing that we need to collaborate on and automatically create the channels, automatically create the uh, tabs uh, with the right um, sublinks and, and features uh, automatically and team members. So there's a, there's a lot of automation that could be done uh, behind the scenes uh, within this, but I don't want to make this a development, you know, dev, development deep dive. But uh, feel free to answer any other questions. I think yes. uh, your your questions were great. Thank you for those. Yeah, I just wanted to add that. Thank you. So. At the, on the most basic level, and and I know this may become overwhelming, but we really did not. The intent was not to do that. At the most basic level, it's a collaboration tool that very simply allows you at this day and age when we are forced to work remotely to be able to chat with the team remotely, be able to do an ad hoc meeting with the team remotely, okay? Be able to uh, spawn a, you know, a phone conversation, by the way, there is a voice over IP functionality, enterprise voice over IP. So this could be your uh, phone system also. And that collaborate on documents in real time. Uh, and that's really what's about. All this, the creation of teams and channels and sub channels, this is just the extra that comes with teams. And again, I want to remind everybody, the tool is free. I would say, go ahead and start using it, You know, dive in, if you need any help, we're here to help. You can email us, call us, chat to us. Uh, we, again, it's absolutely free. We offer support for free uh, during these times because uh, we feel that, you know, again, you need, still need to stay productive. I know a lot of you are working remotely and we still need to feed our families and get the job done. So that's kind of a, would be a wrap up for me because we are a little bit over time. Yeah, one thing I just want to mention is uh, it, it is it is helpful to get a um, to get to get a better hardware uh, with with this because it does take a, take a load on um, uh, on your laptop or desktop that you're using. You probably want to have an extra monitor. You probably want to have a good camera, like you know uh, I have here. Because uh, usually laptop cameras are not not as good, so in order to make this uh, almost uh, almost like a you know face to face type of experience, uh, it can be really really brought to that level when you actually talk to someone, you see that person uh, like large on the screen, and it, it feels close. You know, it feels much better when it when you don't have a good good hardware. So I would recommend, along with all these features. Just to have a better hard hardware, Yuri has a uh, you know even like you know some gamer speaker, gamer headset. Yeah. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I was uh, I wasn't prepared to work at home, so I don't have as good of a camera. That's why I'm not on. And the only headphones I have at the moment is what I have. So I'm um, I'm staying with our you know logo. So yeah, Alex, absolutely right. Certainly helps if you have uh, better equipment. And and for 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 speaking and, and, and microphones, I can I can I can show you that I have this this little device here that is basically um, you know it's no no brand. You did it. All right, you back on. I think the wire. I just say what I do. I just the wire. Anyway, um, it, when it's like sitting there on the desk, it's great uh, to hear the sound and my voice is coming through uh nicely so anyway again thanks everybody um hopefully that uh this is was um uh, where you, you get some you get some tips from uh from here uh from this webinar and hopefully you will 
your staying home collaboration with your um, colleagues and friends are, is going to be uh, better. And um, uh, we're looking forward to any questions or um, or concerns or or requests. Please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Have a great day. It's safe day. Thank you so much, Colin.